you know, with uh, these concepts. So uh, let's move to the questions here. So let's make general review for the chapter, chapter number five. Uh, let's start by, okay, so let's see, number 14, this one, the size 14. So you observe the following treasury yields, all yields are shown on bond equivalent basis. So these are the, you know, the treasury yields from six months from now until 10 years. All the securities maturing from 1.5 years on are selling at par. The 0 0.5 and one year securities are zero coupon instruments. So first calculate the missing spot rates then B, what should be the price of 5% four year treasury security B? And I will add uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, another question later related to the uh, future or the forward rates. So let's start by the 14. So the 14 is a very good one because it will summarize all you know, uh, uh, the concepts that we have seen through this chapter. Okay guys, so let's start. So the first task is to fill the missing cells here for spot rate for 9.5 years and 10 years. Then once you have done this, so we have to compute the fair price of a bond maturing at 10 years. And finally, you have to compute the forward rate. So I will keep the same, uh, the last question for later, inshallah. Okay guys, so let's start. So you have 10 minutes. So suppose you are uh, you know, uh, at the exam, how would you deal with this, this question? Which is calculate the missing spot rates. So this is the first task. So uh, you know, just you know, uh, uh, an advice, if you are dealing with such uh, an exercise during the exam, right? So first thing to do is to open an Excel sheet. So no need to use a calculator, use the Excel sheet. It would be, be better for you. So you have to use an Excel sheet and you have to copy paste these numbers, all right, to the Excel sheet, or you have to write, uh, write them down on the Excel sheet. So, we we'll first start by opening an Excel sheet here. We just zoom in and I will put back these numbers on the Excel. So we have the first column, which is the year. Then I have the yield to maturity. Then the spot rate. Then we have the year, 0 0.5. Then you have, should have an, an incremental by 0 0.5. So plus 0 0.5. Then you should scroll down until reaching the 10 years. 
seal not here. 9.5 and 10 years. So these are the year. Now the year to maturity, it is 10 for the first one. And 9.75 and so on. So I have to, so see, uh, the good thing is they, they are decreasing by 0 0.25. So no need to write them one by one. So we have just to subtract 0 0.25. That's it. Oh no, sorry. It's not zero, no, zero, zero twenty-five. Made a mistake. So zero twenty-five. So these are the spot rate. Now this equal to, so it should remain the same for six months and one year. Then 9.48%, 9.22%, 8.95%, 8 Seven point thirty, seven point zero two percent, Seven five point thirty five, and these are these two are the missing values. Okay, guys. So now you have constructed this table on Excel. You can answer the question or the question one, which is calculate the missing spot trace. So. So what you guys are going to do to find these missing values? Asha, what do you Suppose this, uh, the, the, so this, uh, this question can be given to you for the exams. Uh, I think there's a formula, but I try to remember it and check in the book, but I cannot get it. I don't know. But, uh, okay, take your time. So, as if we are, you know, we are trying to train ourselves for the exam, right? So, suppose you are on, exam, on the exam right now and you have such a questions. So, first thing, so you have to. One of them. Okay. So, so the second question you have to find, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. So let's uh, let's uh, be organized. So uh, 
first step is you know to uh, to build an excel uh, uh, an excel table right or excel sheet once yes. you have built the table let's check uh, on the textbook right so what is the question about it is about computing the theoretical oh, support rates right so we have to use this bootstrapping technique because we are trying to find the theoretical missing spot rates for the period 9.5 years and 10 years. So you have to go to the textbook and see what would what, what is what is about for this technique. So this is So we already have you know, the power rates and we are trying to find, see, the missing values. Okay, guys, come on. Doctor, I think for the uh, 12th year, the spot rate will be 5.02. 5 what are that is? 5.02. 5.02. Okay, so I'll take this question. Any other suggestions? I, I'll try the ninth now. Uh, I, I didn't make an extra sheet because it would take more time. So I try to find it each one. I need to stop it.
Doctor, the, mm -hmm. the, nine, the ninth one will be uh, 5.40. 5 point? 40. No. Our 41? No, no. It's 5, but not 40. 5 point. It would be 5.0607% for the ninth period. And uh, it will be five point. Uh, I just said zero two. I think. No, this one uh, was for the f the tenth period. You said right. Yeah. No. no. For ninth period, it will be five point zero five something. Maybe six. Yeah, we can we can see four point zero mm -hmm. uh, six. I think. Okay. I'm not for five, 5.06 or five. Okay. And uh, last one, it would be 5.028. So let's check, okay? So let's see what we have done last time, right? In order to find the, uh, uh, the theoretical spot, spot curve. So I will go to the board. I just to zoom. Okay, guys, so uh, remember last time when we have learned how to compute the uh, theoretical spot rate, we, uh, we have followed, uh, you know, some steps, right? So now we are trying to find the, the missing hypothetical spot rates. Let me just check for the periods. Nine point so which is uh, nine point five years and ten years, right? So let's start by the nine point five years. So all you have to do is to use you know the prior spot rates in order to find the the you know the nine point five years. One yes. is that remember all these or, or, or all the uh, these securities are par value securities, which means that the uh, interest rate is equal to the yield to maturity, which means in turn that the current price should be equal to the sum of the present value of the future payments. So for the 9.5 years, we have 19. 19 payments, right? 19 coupon payments from the issue date and to the maturity. So, so this par value should be equal to the first coupon payments, let's call it C1, divide one plus Z1 par one. So this is the first year to maturity using the six month securities, the first row plus the second coupon payment, one plus Z2, which is the one year, you know, spot rate, power two plus C3, one plus Z3, power three, and so on, until have reaching C18, one plus Z18, power 18, and finally, C19, one plus Z19, power 19. So we already know 
the Z1 values, Z2, Z3, until the Z18. They are given in the table. But we are trying to find this one. So this is the missing value, Z19, the spot rate for the 19th period, right? But what about the coupon payments? What are the values of the coupon payments? If we, if we find the values of the coupon payments, and if we already know the Z1 and the Z18, we will have just one unknown variable, which is the Z19, which can be found easily. So we have to find now the coupon payments value. What is the coupon payment value? Ah, sorry. It's the same value of the year. Absolutely. So the same value because we'll have the same interest rate. Now, since since the uh, you know all the debt securities are par value. This means that the interest rate is at the same time the yield to maturity, right? Yes. So we have just to go to the table. Go to the 9.5, see this one. So this is the yield to maturity, right? Since it is a par value, Security. This means that this yield to maturity is at the same time the interest rate. So we can use it to find or to compute the coupon payments. Which means that C1 is equal to C2 equal to C18 equal to C19 100 times. 5.5% time divided by two, because you are dealing with semi-annual, you know, coupon payments. So equal. One hundred times zero point zero fifty five divided by two. Two point seventy five dollars that should be paid by the end of each semester from T0 until T19. So this is the coupon payments. Now we have all the ingredients to find the Z19. We know C1 until C19. We know the values of Z1 until Z18. We know the current value of the bond since it is the par value bond. So it becomes easy to find the Z19. So let's go back to the Excel and learn how to use you know, the Excel sheet to find the Z19. So just share the Excel. Sheet. So I would add a new column and call it coupon payment. Coupon payment. So this coupon payment is equal as we have stated in uh, on the board, equal to the par value times the year to maturity is 5.5% divided by two. You scroll down. Now we should compute the present value of the coupon payment. So for the first one, it is equal to the coupon payment divided by one plus the spot rate, but 
should transform it into percentage, as you can see here, divided by two. Or, Now we should repeat the same process for the following one. So here we are, uh, we are facing, uh, you know, the dilemma because here we have, you know, the payments by year, but we are using a semi-annual, uh, you know, coupon payment. So the thing is, we can keep using the same, we can keep using the same yield to maturity, all right? And at the same time, using the year here, 0 0.5 years as a power. So, this one equal to 2.71 divided by one plus the spot rate percentage power. So not same thing here. So I will add or insert a new. So I call it period. So we transform you know the periods from year to uh, semi annual periods. So these are the periods. I mean, freeze to flow. Now for the second one, it will be equal to same thing. The coupon payments divided by one plus the spot rate divided by two since transport rate should convert into percentage now power okay it's here Let's scroll down. So no need to repeat the same formula. And reaching the 18th speed, right? So these are the sum of the present values of coupon payments from the period one to the period 18. Now should compute the sum from period one to period 18. Equal the sum of all these present values. See, now should subtract this, oh, uh, this number from 100 to get the one of the C9 divided by one plus Z19 power 19. So, so the present value, sorry. So the present value, of coupon 19, so the final coupon is equal to the part value 
minus the sum of the present value from 1 to 18. Now all I have to do to find the Z19 which is the coupon spot the spot rate for the 19th period is equal to The C19, so C19 equal to let me check with the board 100 plus equal to 63, right? So this is equal to the coupon payment, 2.75 divided by the legacy 19 power Seems good one, a long one. I mean. Yeah, that is. I said it seems long. Then one, uh, what I uh, try to solve. Uh, you mean your method, right? Sorry. You mean the way you are doing is uh, uh, is shorter than this one? Yes. Uh, but what would you, what is the result? I have told you, Doctor, uh, but you said I'm not sure. And, uh, actually, I, in the paper, not in the Excel, because if I do it in Excel, it will take more time. And you sent that, uh, you want it faster. But, okay. I, I, I think Excel is a lot Excel. quicker. Maybe we. Uh, actually, you, uh, is, you, can't, you can't, you know, do it without Excel because it would take you a lot of time because you are, you need to compute the present value yeah. of all these coupon payments. You can find the present value for the, the last two without uh, good. No, 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 no way. You have to compute the present value of each of these coupon payments first. There is another way, Doctor. You can uh, find the solution, but without equation. No. Through the. Okay, maybe it's it's in our call متتابعه حسابيه or something like this. No, we can do متتابعه حسابيه. Why? Because you are no longer using the same yield to maturity. You are changing yield to maturity from one period to the other. But the yield maturity it's fixed. No, uh, no, 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 the maturity is no, fixed. No, 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 it has fixed yeah. change for each. Listen to me. We have fixed the maturity uh, for, to compute the interest or the coupon payments, right? It's fixed. Yeah. Right. But now we are trying to find the present value which future payment, right? The present value, so, uh, you know, uh, we used to use, after, the, after you know, uh, we have, uh, we know how to deal with the uh, yield curve. So first we used to use one yield to maturity, one discount rate for all the future payments. So if you do so, we can use the annuity formula, right? You're right. But yeah. now we no longer use, the, we cannot, uh, we can no longer use the annuity formula because uh, with, the, uh, with the yield curve, we are obliged to update the discount rate each time for each period. Mm. Right, so we can no longer use the annuity, the annuity form. Yeah. So this is the point that we you have to pay attention. So in the exam, Victor, we will have the same amount of numbers. But, uh, but uh, uh, what do you mean, say, no, uh, amount of numbers? I mean, we will get twenty period. No, no, I don't think so. No, it's 
it will be you know shorter than that. But you know, with Excel, if once you, you get you know the numbers in Excel, it, you know it becomes easy. I will explain you why. Just give me a second, please. So I can go back to the board. So this is the board. I will zoom in. So do we all agree with this formula, right? So we all agree with this formula, right? And we all agree that the only unknown value is the Z19, this one, right? And we all know that the C1 is equal to C2, C3, C4, C, and C18, and even C19 is equal to 2.75. So by replacing C1, C2, and C18 by 2.75, we can compute all this expression, which is the present value for the coupon payments 1 until the coupon payments 18. So let's suppose it's equal to, let's say, to, uh, to A, for example. So we can compute all this formula. So now, if, as you have suggested, as you have suggested, if the discount rate was stable, was constant, we can use the annuity formula, right? No need to use Excel. But the, the challenge is that discount rate right now is changing. We have to update it every, every period, right? So we can no longer use you know, the conventional annuity formula. That's why we need Excel to do it. So once we have computed all this expression, the second step, so now the A is known for us. We have just to compute it. So which means that we can move the A to the other side of the equation. So we can have 100 minus A equal to C19 divided by one plus Z19 power 19. Same thing, we know the C19, which is the same thing as C1 and C18, 2.75. So we can move the C19 another part of the equation. What becomes? So we can divide by C19, which means that 100 minus H is the present value of the coupon payments from 1 to 18 divided by C19 is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus Z19 power 19. So we can invert the order. So we can put this one up. So I have to also to invert the order here. So which means that the C19 divided by 100 minus A is equal to one plus Z19 power 19. So I can put power one by 19 to, to the both sides of the equation. So 19 power one by 19, so I can simplify this one, which means that one plus Z19 is equal to C19, 100 minus A power one, divided by 19. Then you can move the A to the other side of the equation, which means finally that the Z19 is equal to the C19 divided by 100 minus A power 1 by 19 minus 1. So this is the formula. So actually, we need to know the A, we need to know the C19, and then replace them into this equation 
and get the Z19 easily. So this is your challenge. First, you have to compute the A, the present value of the coupon payments from one to 18. Then find the coupon number 19, then replace these two values in this expression and get the Z19. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the Excel. Okay. So remember, this is the present value of the coupon from one period one to period 18. So these are the coupon payments and these are the spot rates. So that's why I have used this formula. So I will I'll do it once again so we can follow me step by step. And so I'm just typing the formula for the present value of the future coupon payments. So equal to the coupon payments divide by open the parenthesis one plus now I will, I will use the spot rate and discount rate not the into maturity because this one was used just to compute you know the uh, uh, to compute just the coupon payments now for discount we use the spot rate one plus see now i have to add the percentage divide by two since we have some annual coupon payments power the number of periods. So this is the present value for the first, right? For the first coupon payment. Now the second one, same thing, equal to the coupon payments, divide by one plus discount rate or spot rate. So don't forget the percentage. Divide by two power two, right? And no need to no, to uh, rewrite this formula every time. You can just use it. Uh, so you can use the set, the the pointer here. Click on the corner of the cell and scroll down. And reaching the eighteenth period. Right. So these are the present value of the coupon payments. Now we have to make the sum of all these present values. So this is what's what I, I put here. So this is the A, the formula A is equal to the sum, see, from F2, which is the first payment, first coupon payment, until F19, which is the 18th payment. Then you should have 100 minus A. So 100 minus A. Then we should compute the Z19. So the formula is in the table, which is equal to the C19, remember, which is the coupon payments here, equal to the coupon payments, divided by 100 minus A. So all this expression should be put into power one divided by 19. minus one. So E, so E20, mm -hmm. right by A24, One, two, two, point 
75 divided by 190. One by nineteen. Now we have to subtract minus one also. So we should add minus one. One plus is nineteen. Oh, okay. So I had that two guys. Sorry, because say that for the final payment, guys, for the final payment, the final period, we should also have or we should also recuperate our you know, uh, initial investments. So by the end of the time horizon, we should get not just 2.75, but also should get also the par value. That's it. So this is the final period. So it is 102. This is the Z9. Now we should convert it into annual Z19, an annual basis. So equal to the semi annual times two. So this is the Z19, 5.07%. So we can convert it into percentage. So this is the right answer. 5.07%. Okay, guys? Yes. So the thing is, uh, the mistake I have made is I have forgot to add the par value for the final payment. So because since we are at the end, you know, uh, uh, of the time horizon, we should receive the coupon payments plus, you know, the par value of the bond. Now, let's try uh, to find the Z, 20. What would be the Z20, which is the final one or the coupon payment or the, so, sorry, the spot rate for the 10th year or the 20th period. Mm -hmm. So this one is equal to 5.07. Well, for this, we will also use 102.75. Uh, no, because see, so let's get for the 10th uh, year, right? So the yield to maturity has changed, right? This is no longer 5.5% per year. It's 5.25%, which means that the coupon payments will change also. Is it clear, Shell? Yes. That is yes, the coupon payment to change on that. So, the film that he had to get saved. So, now we have a direct matter. We have to compute once again the coupon payments using, using a new coupon rate, which is 5.25 percent per year. So, we have to compute once again the coupon payments. Then find the present value and continue the remaining process. What are the? Yeah. Yes. Right. You should find, I think, uh, let's check the right answer. You should find 4.8%. Uh, 4.8.
Absolutely, because we change the maturity of the heading. So we used to use 5.5%, yeah. now we have to use 5.25%. Okay. Doctor, it's uh, four point eight zero three percent. Good, very good. What about you, Abdaliz? Oh, 
Okay, sure. So, uh, I don't feel very well now, but I think the lecture recording now, I will back then, I will understand okay. before, more. Before going to the, le the lecture uh, you know, recording, let's try to do it together, right? So uh, you have your sheet, Adani, right? Yes. Okay. So let's suppose that we are on exam. I'll open new sheet. So I don't have, suppose I don't have these columns. So I will delete them, right? So suppose I, I even don't have periods, right? Suppose these are, you know, the data available for me. And I am asked to find the Z20, right? So yes. first thing, since we are uh, uh, paying semi-annual coupon, right? So I have to convert the period from year to semi-annual right from from year to six months period so i will add here i will insert a new column i will call it period so i have to multiply by two since there are two six months in every year divide by by two so i'm converting the periods from annual to semi-annual. So these are the periods from first six months, first semester, until the 20th six months. Yeah. Right? Now, I have to find the coupon things. Yes. Now for the coupon payments, uh, some students can, uh, you know, uh, uh, can be confused about how or, or what yield use to find the coupon payments. So we use the, we use the yield to maturity. When we talk about term structures or, inter, uh, or interest term structures, we or the yield curve, we would, so this yield to maturity is the coupon rate. Since we have made the hypothesis that all the debt securities are par value, which means that yield to maturity equal to spot rate. So the coupon payments is equal 100 is the par value times the yield to maturity so now you have to convert it into percentage sometimes it's given to you as a percentage right if not you have to convert it into percentage then so this, don't forget this is the annual yield to maturity you have to uh, you know convert it into semi annual one you have to divide by by two uh, sorry, uh, no, I'm wrong about that because the yield to maturity so was wrong about the 20th period, so, so we have to use, so this is the yield to maturity, and now, what you have to use, since we are asked to find, you know, the, uh, uh, the spot rate for the 20th period, so it would be 5.25%, and this yield is constant for all, you know, the periods, throughout all the periods. So it is equal to 100 times the CLC21, which is the interest rate for the uh, maturity of 10 years, percentage, and divide by two. So this payments should remain the same throughout all, you know, so control C. Well, that's not 2000. It should be two point something, I think. Hey, 2.625. It's not 2000? Okay. No, 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 not right. because I, I, I'm using the French, uh, you know, the French uh, version of Excel. Okay. So the French uh, use the uh, you know the comma as uh, uh, as a decimal, right? It's not like the English one. So, 
So I will just paste this question and paste the values. See, so these are now, remember for the final period, to this one, for the final period, we will receive in addition the power value. And after the fatra, we will take the power value. So we have to add 100. So we have to add 100. We will add 100. So we will add 100. Plus 100. So equal. So we will receive the coupon payments plus the power value. Now we have identified the different cash flows for each period. We will use the present value. Yes. These payments, right? Now for the present value, we will use the spot rates. Yeah, we need to maturity to sum the coupon payments. I just coupon payments. So I'm talking present value. We have the spot rate. Yes. Yeah. Well, so we have all the spot rates except the final one. Except the final one. So actually, we are asked to find the final one, Z20. So let's start by the first one. So equal to the coupon payments divided by one plus the spot rate. Don't forget put the percentage and divide by by two. Then power the number of period. Same thing for the second one. Equal the coupon payments divided by one plus the spot rate percentage divided by two. Now power is number two. So the good thing with Excel that it will allow you to save time. You don't need to uh, uh, rewrite and recompute the present value each time. So you have to just to click on the right corner of the cell and scroll it down until reaching the 19th period. Head. So we can use the, 20, uh, the 20th period because we still don't know how much is the spot rate. Okay, guys. So now, second or second step is to find what we has called uh, uh, what we have called the A, which is the sum of the present value from one until uh, the ninetieth one. So it is the sum of all these present values. Then you have to compute the 100 to the power value 100 minus the sum is equal to 100 minus A. Then you have to find the Z20. So it is equal, so remember it is equal to the final payments. So first you have to open the parentheses. The final payments divided by the 100 minus A power one by the number of periods, which is 20 and minus, finally minus one. See, now to get the Z20 on the annual basis, you have to multiply by two and transform to the percentage form. So it is 4.8%. So this is the way uh, we should proceed in order to have you know, uh, or to find 
the spot rates. So this is the Z90. Z19, and this one is the Z20. So we can replace it here for point. Sorry, I just saw that. Four point eight. Hey guys, now the last question, please take note, the last question is what is, what is the six month forward rate so forward here rate So, what is the six month forward rate starting in the, let's say, fifth year, fifth year? So, this is the additional questions. What is the six month forward rate, rate starting in the fifth year? Remember that when we have dealt with You know, the forward rate, let's go just to the board. Remember the formula, guys, the F was equal to one, so the F1, so this is what you have computed during, you know, at the lecture, the first part of the lectures, F1 was equal to 1 plus Z2 power 2, 1 plus Z1 power 1 minus 1, all right? So this was the formula when we had computed the, uh, uh, the forward rate for the first six months started after six months, all right? Now we are, we are asked to find the six month forward rate Starting after five years. After five years. This means that five years is equal to 10 six month periods, right? So we have to replace the F1 by F10. Right? And this one is would be the Z. 11, 11, and Z, 10, 10. So see, so remember this, is, this, is, this was the first formula, F1 was equal to one plus Z2 power two, one plus Z1 power one minus one. So this was the formula, for the forward rate starting after one period. Now this one we're asking to do or to compute the forward rate, rate starting after five years, which is 10 periods. So if we use the same formula and try to adapt it to the new data. So instead of, ha of having one after one period, we have after 10 periods. Now, see, so if we are asked to find after one period, we'll use the Z2. So we'll add plus one, right? So now we're dealing with 10 periods. So we'll use 
the next the, the following period one plus z eleven or eleven. So we we are keeping the same you know same subscript which is one. So it means one plus z ten the same subscript ten minus one. So we have to go to the table, find the spot rate for the period number 11, the spot rate for the period number 10, and use both of them to find the forward rate after five years. Is it clear, guys? Yes. So we have just to keep the same order. Now, suppose, suppose, for example, that they, uh, they, uh, they ask you during the exam to find uh, the sport, uh, the four grade after four years, four years. So the four years is equivalent to eight periods. See, so instead of using one, I'm using eight. Instead of using Z2, should go by, by plus one. So one plus Z9 power nine divided by one plus Z8 power 8 minus 1 and so on. Okay, guys. So always keep the same order. You have to go by plus 1 on the numerator and keep the same subscript on the denominator. Okay, so let's go back to the Excel sheet. So I'll ask it to find the F five years, G is 10 periods. So to do so, we, we, uh, we need the F11, sorry, the Z11, the spot rate for the next period and the Z10. So Z11 should go back to the table, find the 11th period, then go to the spot rate, see 7.3. So equal. So the eleven is equal. We should go to eleventh period. Seven point three. Seven point three percent. Don't forget divide by by two. Why for the tenth one? So this is the period ten. We have seven point fifty eight. So equal to seven point fifty eight percent. Once again divide by by two. Now for you know uh, uh, the F then to the forward rate is equal to one plus Z eleven power eleven divided by one plus Z ten. power 10 and all this expression to be subtracted from 1. 
So this is the X10, right? Now, if we want to convert it into annual basis, so F10 annual is equal to the F10 semi annual power two transform it into percentage. And that's it. So it would be equal to 4.52%. Okay, guys. So this means that after one, after five years, the market is expecting that uh, a six month treasury uh, uh, yield, a uh, treasury bill would offer 4.52% as yield to maturity after five years. Okay, guys. Any question? No. Okay, guys. So uh, I'll try to upload uh, as, as soon as possible, you know, uh, the lectures. Plus, I will send you, you know, the Excel file. So you can, you know, uh, do it by your own. Now, uh, don't forget to send me the assignments. Please do it after next uh, Tuesday. So I can, you know, uh, uh, give you the, your intended marks. And uh, but also, uh, if you have any questions uh, about, you know, uh, uh, or if you need any general review, please send me, uh, you know, uh, the topics or the issues you are struggling with, and we'll try to solve them, uh, you know, uh, inshallah, during the next lectures. Okay, guys. So thank you, and uh, uh, see you, inshallah, next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.